Hi everyone, today I'd like to talk about a retrosynthesis of this molecule. I want to use it as a way to show how to disconnect things that have one for functionality and introduce ideas in umpalung chemistry. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. Right then, to start with, I see that I've got an alpha, beta unsaturated carbonyl group and there's a classic way of disconnecting that across the alkene. Now my go-to reactions for this type of disconnection will be the aldol condensation reaction or a Wittig. And because my disconnection, well, it's, it's in the middle of a molecule, so my reaction going forwards will have to be intramolecular, the aldol condensation is particularly good in this circumstance. Now that disconnection will take me back to this diketone. And just to have a look at how I might do an aldol reaction, basically, if I could enolize here, I'd be able to close the enolate onto the other carbonyl group to do the aldol condensation. Now, the good thing about this molecule is that although there are other places to enolize, specifically these two hydrogens in red, if I were to enolize at those positions, I would be closing onto a carbonyl to form a three-membered ring, and therefore much less favorable than the five-membered ring formation. So I can be reasonably confident that if I put in some sort of base that will just hang around in the reaction, such as sodium methoxide, although that has the potential to reversibly deprotonate any of the protons that are alpha to a carbonyl, it should only lead to cyclization of the five-membered ring and then E1CB elimination in the same pot to give me the product. This is where one of the key disconnection principles comes into this retrosynthesis, that I've generated a 1, 2, 3, 4 dicarbonyl species. Now, the general approach to disconnecting these types of things is to use an idea called umpalung chemistry, which is where we consider the reverse polarity versions of our electrophiles and nucleophiles. So, for example, if I were to think about a carbonyl group, rather than thinking about it as an electrophile at the carbon next to the oxygen, I want to generate a reagent that behaves like it's got a negative charge at that position. This is a so-called D1 synphon. Alternatively, while the natural reactivity alpha to a carbonyl is to be a nucleophile as an enolate, so the reverse polarity would be to add something like a positive charge in this position, so something that behaves like this reagent. This is known as an A2 synphon. Now, there are multiple ways to use ideas in umpalung chemistry to disconnect this molecule, so I thought I'd just outline a few different ones that are classical ways to do synthesis. Now, firstly, my eye is drawn to this particular uh, carbon, number three, because that would be considered to be a branch point in the molecule. And these are often really good ways to break up a molecule into simpler bits because it reduces the, the complexity of the molecule. So disconnecting either side of that branch point might be a smart move. So first, I'm going to consider this disconnection here between atoms three and four. Now, that would take me back to these fragments where I need to make a decision which one is going to be the one that's the acceptor and one that's going to be the donor. So which one's going to have the plus and which one's going to have the minus. Now, I think my preference is to take the one at the top to have the nucleophilic component and the one at the bottom to have the electrophilic component. And that's because I know some reagents that fit these patterns quite nicely for that top one. I start with nitropropane, so if I were to deprotonate in this position, that's a very acidic proton, I would generate a good nucleophile there. In fact, it would be a soft nucleophile. I also know a good surrogate for this type of synthon as an acceptor in the three position, so this is an A3 acceptor, and that would be this alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl species. Now, I'd be pretty happy that I could buy nitropropane, but say I didn't have any in the lab, I'd always disconnect this back to ethyl bromide and nitromethane, with the same idea that I could deprotonate next to the nitro group to generate a soft nucleophile that would be great for SN2. Now, for the alpha, beta, and saturated carbonyl species, I'd go to my go-to reactions again, so the aldol condensation or the Wittig reaction. In both cases, the disconnection will be across the CC double bond. And having a look at the aldol condensation version first, well, I'd need something like this. I'd need acetophenone, definitely available and cheap. And I'll use that to generate the enolate and react with the aldehyde. So I'd be generating the enolate on that component and reacting it with acetaldehyde. And acetaldehyde is also available. Now, I'd have to be a bit careful here on my control elements for this. I wouldn't want to just chuck all of this together with sodium methoxide because I would get some cross aldol products. In fact, it would be a lot easier to enolize my aldehyde, so I would end up with a lot of self-condensation of that acetaldehyde. So a controlled way of doing this reaction would be to take the ketone and at minus 78, treat it with LDA. So that will fully form an enolate in my flask. Then I would chuck in the aldehyde. And after that step, I'll end up with this beta-hydroxy ketone. 
And then as a final step, I'd need to do an elimination. So maybe something like treating that with sodium hydroxide that will promote an E1 CB elimination. Now, alternatively, I could have done a Wittig reaction and that will require me to have this ILID, so a nice stabilized ILID. So therefore I know I'll get the transalkene in my product and I'd react that ILID with the aldehyde. Now this reaction has the bonus of just adding the things together and filtering off the byproducts, maybe a bit of columning to purify it, but it has the disadvantage of, well, we might have to make the ILID. So to make the ILID, I would go back to the alpha halo carbonyl species, so with the bromide, knowing that to go backwards, I could treat this with triphenylphosphine and then probably add a reasonably strong base to generate the ILID. Now I'd be reasonably happy that this alpha halo carbonyl species is readily available, but if we really wanted to make it from scratch, we could go back to acetophenone as before and promote the formation of its enol form using acetic acid and then also reacting it with Br2 as an electrophile. That should result in the monobrominated product. Okay, I'm just going to pop back over to my starting material and just show you some alternative disconnections. Now, one thing I could have also noted when I was thinking about the branch point was, well, if I disconnected here between atoms two and three, this might actually be a really smart move because it will take me back to a symmetrical starting material. And that's this penton three own. Now the other component would be this, and I need to make a decision of whether I want to make each one of these, the acceptor or the donor versions. So I need one of them to be plus and one of them to be minus. Now, if I wanted to try and make this top one, the electrophile, I would need to add a bromide or something that would break the symmetry and I lose all the advantages of the symmetry of that starting material. So I'm inclined to make that one the donor component that would require the bottom species to be the acceptor. And I know I could do this because I could maybe form some sort of enolate equivalent. And here I've got my umpalung reagent below. Now we've actually seen a good umpalung reagent. We had it above and that's just the alpha halo carbonyl. And you could make that as we said above, or we could just find it readily available. So then I need to think about what type of chemistry does this thing want to do? So generally this would be a really good SN2 substrate. It's got a carbonyl nearby to stabilize its transition state. And also it's a primary alkyl halide. For an SN2 reaction, well, ideally I need a soft nucleophile to make that work well. So that makes my constraint on my enolate equivalent. I need something to be soft. Now a really good way of making a soft enolate equivalent would be to use an enamine, so something like this. I'll just note that beta keto esters are also good at this, but I'm less inclined to use it because it's going to be more work for me in my forward synthesis because I'd need to break the symmetry. Okay, so just to show how we would use this in a forward synthesis, I'd start off with my pentanone and I'd react it with this pyrrolidine with catalytic acid. That would generate under thermodynamic control the enamine. And because it's symmetrical, it doesn't matter which side the enamine forms on. Once I form my enamine, I would then react it with my electrophile. Then all I'd need to do is, is work that up with some aqueous acid to get to my 1,4-diketone. And while we're thinking about forward reaction type considerations, in my previous synthesis, I was suggesting to use this nitro compound as a surrogate for my carbonyl. Now that would give me this intermediate here in the bottom right hand corner with a nitro group where I need a ketone. And that's okay because I can use a standard functional group into conversion using titanium trichloride or tickle three in water. This is a NEF reaction to reveal the carbonyl directly. As ever with a retrosynthesis, there are loads of other ways that we can approach this problem. Um, I think these are two of the major ones that are worth considering. Right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please do give the video a like and consider subscribing to my channel and I'll be back with more retrosynthesis videos soon.